Hi everyone, Karina Gantis here from Corfu, Greece. I am a writer, author of eight soon to be nine books and entrepreneur. I run Author Assist, which is um, author services for new and established authors. This is the Fun Day Sunday tag, which uh, Gina Kubo has set for today. So let's get on with this. Number one. A piece of writing, a video or song that takes you back to a time or a memory. Well, believe it or not, I used to sing live in a rock band back in the day. And so if I hear any of the songs that we did in our playlist, our set list, then that takes me back to that uh, time in my life where uh, it was uh, exciting and uh, very different to how life is now. You may not uh, know of any of these songs from my playlist, but let me see if you recognize this one. I got my first real sweet skin, bought it at the five and done, played it till my fingers bled, was the summer of 69. <laughs> there you go enough of that. Number two, a writer who best brought to you your sense of description. There is a writer, you might have heard of him, Neil Gaiman. I read his first book, uh, Neverwhere, which I think that really hit me with the fantasy genre and why I wanted to write in that genre. Um, Spellbinding really was, and oh, it's upside down. Never mind, it's back to front. Mirror writing. <laughs> um, I'm just going to uh, read you just a, a couple of paragraphs from the book so you can see what I mean about description and about putting yourself in that scene. Richard walked back to his flat upset and confused and angry. Sometimes he would wave at taxis, but never with any real hope that they would stop, and none of them did. His feet hurt, his eyes stung, and he knew that soon enough he would wake up from today and a proper Monday, a sensible Monday, a decent, honest Monday would begin. When he reached the flat, he filled the bath with hot water, abandoned his clothes on the bed, and naked walked through the hall and climbed into the relaxing waters. He'd almost dozed off when he heard a key turn, a door open and close, and a smooth voice say, Of course, you're the flat, the first flat I've shown around today, and I've got a list of people as long as your arm who are interested. It's not as large as I imagined from the details your office said, said a woman. It's compact, yes, but I like to think that is a virtue. Richard had not bothered locking the bathroom door. He was, after all, the only person there. A gruffer, rougher male voice said, Thought you said it was an unfurnished flat. Looks pretty damn furnished to me. The previous tenant must have left some of his stuff behind. Funny, they never told me anything about that. Richard stood up in the bath. Then, because he was naked and the people could walk in at any moment, he sat back down in the bath. And then, rather desperately, he looked around the bathroom for a towel. Oh, look, George, said the woman in the hallway. Someone's left a towel on this chair. Richard inspected and rejected a poor towel substitute, a loafer, half bottle of shampoo and a small yellow rubber duck. What's the bathroom like? asked of the man. Richard grabbed a face cloth and draped it into the front of his crotch. Then he stood up with his back to the wall and prepared to be mortally, more, mortifly ingly embarrassed. The door was pushed open. Three of them walked into the bathroom. A young man in a camel hair coat and a middle-aged couple. Richard wondered if they were as embarrassed as he was. It's a bit small, said the woman. Compact corrected the camel head coat smoothly easy to take off the woman ran her fingers along the side of the sink and wrinkled her nose I think we've seen it all 
said the middle-aged man. They walked out of the bathroom. It would be very handy for everything, said the woman. A conversation continued in lower turns. Richard climbed out of the bath and edged over to the door. He spotted the towel on the chair in the hall and he leaned out and grabbed it. We'll take it, said the woman. You will, said the camel hair coat. It's just what we want, she explained. Or it will be once we've made it homely. Could you have it ready for Wednesday? Of course. We'll have all this rubbish cleaned out of here in tomorrow, no problem. Richard, cold and dripping and wrapped in his towel, glared at them from the doorway. It's not rubbish, he said. It's my stuff. We'll pick up the keys from the office then. Excuse me, said Richard, plainly. I live here. They pushed past Richard on the way to the front door. Pleasure doing business with you, said the camel hair coat. Can you... Can any of you hear me? This is my flat. I live here. So that was a small excerpt from Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. I'll show it again. And I know it's a mirror image there, but never mind. Absolutely brilliant fantasy. I think there was a TV series made from based on the book, but I don't think it really took off. But if you haven't read it, it's fantastic, so do read it. A writer that you can hear as you read, that's number three. Um, it would have to be J.K. Rowling. Uh, she writes as though she's uh, reading it out loud, which uh, you can hear her voice. Um, and you can see her sitting in the hall in front of thousands and thousands of fans as she reads from her book. Number four, how do you incorporate senses into your own writing? Well, I always try, especially when I do a new scene, I always try to add at least two senses, uh, sound, taste, touch. If I can do that, then without going senses overload, it allows the reader to picture the scene a lot better. Uh, number five. The lack of senses and where it worked or where it failed. See, I'm going to go back to Neil Gaiman again because I loved that book so much. I went out and bought another one. You can't see the title, but it's called Smoke and Mirrors. And it's short stories and I hated it. I could not get into it at all. And I remember being on a some sort of um, a book site and I mentioned it that I loved Neverwhere and then when I went and bought Smoke and Mirrors I hated it and I just stopped reading his work after that and someone actually emailed me and I, I have a I don't know I just I, I have a sixth sense here that it was actually Neil Gaiman who actually emailed me using uh, alias and asked why I didn't like the book it was just strange to have an email from someone asking that, so I'd like to think it was him. Anyway, um, this is called Cold Colours, and just just listen to this here. Uh, hold on. There we go. Woken up at nine o'clock by the postman, who turns out not to be the postman, but a seller of pigeons, crying. Fat pigeons, pure pigeons, dove white, slate grey, living, breathing pigeons. None of your reanimated, reanimated muck here, sir. I have pigeons and to spare, and I tell him so. He tells me he's new to the business, used to be part of the moderately successful financial securities analyst com company, but was laid off and replaced by a computer. Still mustn't crumble, one door opens, another one slams, Gotta keep with the times, sir. Gotta keep with the times. He thrust me a free pigeon. To attract new customs, sir. Once you've tried our pigeons, you'll never go to another. And he struts down the stairs singing, Pigeons alive, 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 oh. Ten o'clock and after I've bathed and shaved, I take the pigeon into my study and refresh the chalk circle around my old Dell 310. Hang wards at each corner of the monitor and do what is needed with the pigeon. Then I turn up the computer on and it chugs and hums. Inside it fans blows like a storm wind and oceans ready to drown poor merchantmen. 
Auto accept complete it beeps. It'll do, it'll do, it'll do. The tourists lean over the rift rails of hell, staring at the damned, perhaps the worst part of damnation. Eternal torture is bearable in noble silence alone, but an audience eating crisps and chips and chestnuts, and an audience who aren't really that interested, they must feel like something at a zoo, the damned. One has recognised a relative in the flames and is waving. Cooey, cooey, Uncle Joseph, look. Now he says your uncle, great uncle Joe that died before you were born. And that's him down here in the slough with his eyes in boiling scum with the worms crawling in and out of his face. Such a lovely man. We all cried at his funeral. Wave to your uncle, Narissa. Wave to uncle. The whole book is like that. It just doesn't make any sense. I think there's maybe one or two stories which are easily understandable. I do need easy reads to uh, enjoy my books. Um, so, so happy with Neverwhere. So disappointed with Smoke and Mirrors. And this is the same author, Neil Gaiman. Okay. Name an indie author not known to your current circle of indie author friends. So an indie author that none of my friends know of is called Sean Jeffrey. We met in a writer's website, uh, a group back in 2000 maybe, a long, long time ago. We became really good friends and we used to help each other out with uh, critiques of each other's work. He is a author of thrillers and amazing creepy horrors. Sean Jeffrey, I shall leave a um, link for his uh, Amazon page so you can go and take a look. A unique blurb. Make on the spot a unique blurb from your current work in progress. While I'm currently editing uh, Illusion Red to the Quest, so it's not work in progress. Um, so you're not having a blurb from that because it's a secret until it comes out. So, the only other one I have, ooh, yes, I know I have two. I have an MI, MI5 thriller, and then I have an, an erotic, erotic horror, should we call it, an erotic horror. So, I'll give you a quick blurb of that. Um, absolute um, fanatic fan of... Um, a uh, rock band called uh, Predator. Uh, she works in a record shop um, and uh, a colleague gives her tickets to go and see and get her, um, a one-on-one -on -one experience with the band. Anyway, so she's a big fan. Um, and she doesn't know that uh, the lead singer, he's actually caught on caught her eye he's uh, she's caught his eye and so he looks out for her on concerts and meet and greets and stuff and um, I don't know I think he becomes he becomes the fan and he starts stalking her anyway they meet up um, I think yeah he, that's right they start with cyber sex um, and she doesn't know who he is. And then when they finally agree to meet up, she's just blown away by who he is. And she knows it's not going to work. He's like a mega pop star, a rock star, and she's a nobody. And, but they give it a go anyway. And um, it's actually, it does work out. Um, she refuses to quit her job at the record company, of course, at the record shop. And um, they have a... As, as much of a close relationship as they can with the situation. Anyway, so so you've got the cyber sex, that's the part of the erotica, and then it turns into a horror when they're actually on their honeymoon and they've gone off on motorbikes to do a, a round uh, America tour on uh, road bikes and they stop off at um, a bar and if you remember, let me just pause while I try to remember the title if any of you remember the awesome Quentin Valentino film 
with the gorgeous George Clooney and it's called uh, From Dust Till Dawn and if you remember what happens in that that's where I got the idea from the scene for the novel uh, uh, Predator which is what it's called and so yeah that's the blurb so far <laughs> what do you now know about scene creation that you did not know a year ago well <clears throat> I've been writing for over 25 years and I stopped for 15 so now that I've started writing again um, I can't say that I didn't know anything that I know anything new about scene creation that I didn't know a year ago or even 15 years ago I'm not saying I'm perfect I'm not saying I'm an amazing amazing writer but um, I can I can definitely create a scene I know how to do that pretty easy um, Name an indie artist that you've become friends with this year. Uh, let's go to a musician. Um, the band is called Ghost Season. Thank you, Joe, for uh, getting me in touch with them. They're actually from Athens. I didn't know at the time. They uh, allowed me to use uh, their music as theme, as the intro and outro to the radio show that I host, um, Author Assist with Queen Agantus on the Artist First Radio Network. Um, they've also allowed me to use their music for uh, book trailers of my own creation. Um, awesome band, love their stuff, and they're in the studio writing new music now, so yay! Okay, uh, and then number 10, wish Joe and his wife a happy anniversary. Well, that goes without saying. Joe, I love you. Thank you so much for everything you do for the indie community. I'm wishing you and your beautiful wife a wonderful anniversary. Pop over to Amazon and check out my books. Karina Gantis. <laughs>